Hello my friends of Battery Labs, welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial will be about a NDVI calculation with of Landsat 8 image with, with Python and Rasterio. Okay, so maybe you might know the procedure about to, to do a NDVI calculation in, uh, in QAS, but uh, today we are going to do it in Python, in pure Python, and then we are going to to show how is the procedure and what do we get from this procedure and that is a geospatial raster okay we are going to use python and rasterio rasterio is actually a library uh, in python to to manage read and write rasters okay there is a tutorial about how to install rasterio in windows yeah uh, that it will be on the description of this video okay Great. So first of all, let's start a Jupyter notebook. Jupyter notebook, and then you will receive this. You will receive this folder that I strongly recommend that you put on your documents. Okay. There is a Landsat. Actually, you will have a clipped, a clipped version of the band four of Landsat eight that is the red, and a clipped version of the band five of Landsat eight that is the near infrared. Okay. Because the, I mean. You can do it with your own image. It's just a matter that you link to these bands of your image, of your Landsat 8 image. But they, since everybody weighs like 185 megabytes, it will be much hard, much heavy for to upload to the server of, of this website. Okay, so we will work with a with a clipped version of the rasters. Okay, great. Okay, and then you will see you will have an output that is will that it will be where the results are stored, and then a script, uh, the scripts that it, that is where we are going to do our Python scripting. Okay, great. So this is the kernel of Jupyter notebook. Okay, so on the Jupyter notebook we go to documents, then we go to NDVI calculation, and then we go to scripts. And then we create a new Python 3 notebook that will be called tutorial. Okay. Actually, I need this as a, as a Okay. So now we are going to, to now we are in tutorial, and then we are going to import some libraries. Import Rasteri. Well, from Rasterio import plot that is a part of Rasterio import matplotlib pyplot as plt and then import numpy as np and then we use the some magic command that is matplotlib inline okay we run our cell okay ah matplotlib inline okay great then we are going to list all the files that they are in the landsat a folder i mean for your landsat a folder it will be your bands but in this case we have a clipped version of band 4 and band 5 import os o, os dot list of list gear lens 8 and then we have the band 4 and the band 5 okay then we are going to um, then we are going to create or we are going to open the band 4 and the band 5 that is the infrared and the red band 4 is equal to rasterio open lancet 8 lc4 yeah and this what is this is the red band okay and band files is equal to rasterio open band 
Nonset. One five, and this is the near infrared. Okay, then we run it. Okay, so then we can then we can explore our bands. It's pretty easy. For example, I want to see how my how many rows there are in band four. So say band four height. height. Okay, with this we have that there are our clipped version of the image. It has. 1338 rows and how many columns there are? 14.8. Okay, this is the amount of columns. For example, we can plot our band. Okay. And this is this is a plotting our own. and then we can plot like for example we can know which is the byte type i mean because this is important when you do the uh, for me when i when i research for this tutorial the it's important to know which with with which byte are you working with okay because it really matters on the ndvi calculation it's a, it's a long history i mean it's a uh, okay but let let us let us explore which is the byte type of the byte type of uh, Landsat 8. So let's say band for D types because there is only one band, so we run it. Okay, and then we have a integer of 60 of 16 uh, bytes. Okay, so if you know about the byte, 16 bytes is actually a digital number that goes from zero to something like 60,000, I guess. Yeah, but um, uh, you can see the equivalence. Okay, but this is something that when we do the NDVI calculation, we have to take into account. Okay, because you can, uh, I will give you, tell you in advance that you cannot do it the NDVI calculation if the image is in a, in in integer of 16 actually you have to transform it to float of 64 okay and then we can since uh, the raster is uh, since the raster is geospatial we have some this geospatial attributes of the raster so let's say uh, the CRS actually I do the shortcut on my keyboard that is shift plus return so but it's the same as run okay and then we can we can get some transform we can get some transform uh, parameters of the raster okay okay and then we can read the we can see the the, the digital number of the rasters okay uh, there was one question that say why I do use the digital number of the raster to calculate the NDVI because if you go to the to the NDVI formula it's the same I mean is I, I should use the radiance okay but it's the same I mean it's the same uh, on a scale I mean it's a the digital number is a scale version of the radiance so actually if you do the calculation you will get the I mean is independent uh, is it's like it's like I don't know it's in mathematics when you have the, the like the numerator is multiplied by two and the denominator is multiplied by two actually it won't affect the, the result of the division okay and then uh, I'm not going to type it but there is a this is a function that we can plot both uh, this is the the red and the near and actually the near on the vegetated parts are will reflect more red more near infrared yeah in the in the areas where there is more vegetation while uh, in in those areas the red won't be reflected so it will be absorbed so this is the reflected that's why you see and here the red is absorbed and the near infrared is reflected okay okay let's flow and then 
when I faced this uh, this problem about the integer and remember you have to remember you have to think about this the band 4 on on Landsat 8 is actually an integer and the NDVI is a division most is your NDVI will be a fraction I mean your NDVI will be a float a, re, a real number yeah so what does it mean that you have to convert I mean but in Python the operation um, uh, I don't know if Python 3 but in Python 2 was this if you operate among integers the result will be an integer okay uh, let's see for example a is equal to 1 plus 3 divided by 1 plus 4 divided by 2 okay and then let's say okay and okay in Python 3 it is possible to get a um, flow from um, operation in integers yeah but in Python 2 was not the same but this is for uh, for numbers but if we are talking about rasters it is not possible I mean if you if you have an operation in between integers you know, on rasterio you will get an integer okay as, as long as I know okay so let's let's change our our rasters to floats so say band the near no let's say the red is equal to band for read this is the command to get the, the matrix as type float 64 This is near one five. Okay, great. With this, you have changed your your rasters. For example, your your raster you have changed it to from uh, from integers to let's say near. Let's run it, and then you have it, and this is a float. Okay. This is a float 68. Okay, great. Then you have the so NDVI. It will be. Uh, I have. I mean, I did this this conditional in NumPy because uh, why did I did a condition in NumPy? Because it can be a part where the where where um, for example the it will be, uh, for example, if you see Rasterio I mean ok, for example, we we do the analysis but there are some parts that are inactive so actually it's not a number, ok but uh, on the NDVI calculation you get you also do, since you are working with the whole uh, with the whole, uh, in this case no, but for a Landsat image, you are working with a whole uh, matrix. Actually, you will get some errors because then you will have a divide, division by zero on the on those parts. So I create this. If you have a part that is inactive, where the near or the red, where well, mostly the near is the red, is equals to zero, your NDVI will be zero you will will be the value that you want will be minus 10 something like that I say that is zero yeah okay and if not it will be near minus red divided by near plus red okay that's it this is the whole calculation and then we get we say NDVI and then we run it and then say okay we have fractions okay we have fractions ah sorry 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 this is band 5 sorry this is band 5 and then okay this is the fraction these are the fractions the every this is every pixel that reflects an NDVI but 
we have right now what do we have is just a matrix so we what we want is a geospatial raster ndvi image is equal to rasterio open and then this open is actually could also be right so it's actually you open the space i mean I mean not a, I'm not a developer by profession so I don't get I I do get what I have so it will, our output image will be image.tiff that will be all right mode the driver will be gtiff and the width will be band four dot width and the high will be band four dot because we are applying we apply this the same uh, geospatial attributes as the input files the count will be one why we will one because the ndvi is only one bank one bank the crs is equal to band four dot crs okay and transform is equal to band for trans on. and the d type is equal to float float 64 and then this ndvi image right and then okay this command actually opens a space because you are on writing mode and then write ndvi dot one ndvi image close okay okay let's hope that i have i've no not i have not made any error okay i have done one okay great and then we are going to open the file because I want to show you that you can see the the T file, but we have to open again, okay? Because we have closed, so we have to open again. I don't know if you have, if you can open before this close, but okay. I don't want to fancy around. So in input, in DVI image dot tiff, and then say plot dot show in dvi okay and then we run it okay and that's it okay so this is your ndvi but actually what 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 did you get from this script what did you get from this script is here in output there is this ndvi image that actually because it's in flow 60 but it, because it's, it's a little bit heavy yes compared with compare it with this I mean if you you change it to float of 32 it will be lighter I guess okay but okay let's but okay so then on your QIS okay we go to the to the NDVI calculation we go to the output folder and then to the NDVI image okay and in this NDVI image here we have the NDVI image, okay, this is the scale, so this is the areas, these areas are most, we can be concrete, I don't know, well, let's see, and then we can change the, we can change the scale of pseudo color, uh, quantile, many clays, many clays, okay, great, and then what else and then these areas are arid okay and let's see uh, with the quick map service I will add uh, Google satellite hybrid and then we can see that these places 
that are on very that are really with the negative NDVI actually those are not irrigated areas but they are uh, ponds they are like oxidation ponds or something like that okay so these are the the roads have low NDVI and the crops have better NDVI no look those are better I mean maybe and the difference in between for example here the difference in between this part and what you see on the Google satellite is that actually maybe those are from different dates okay this is not the cropping period or something like that okay so I hope that this tutorial will be helpful for you you will have the scripts and the the scripts and the and the sample Landsat 8 image okay so and um, okay I will drop my email here I get some because like this procedure I haven't found that specifically if somebody is doing research and then has done something a better algorithm and so on or whatever or like if you fancy around if you want to fancy around with with another stuff let's say this is my this is my email okay and um, let's we what we are we are a blog in um, in um, uh, what open source software for water resources study okay so we create a lot of tutorials on python on modflow on qas hope that you find this tutorial interesting and if you we actually we do not <laughs> we do not support uh, what we want is that people in, uh, enhance and people think that there is new ways to do the things that you do every day okay so if you want to drop us some questions um, this is my mail but I, I have to tell you that we do not give a specific support and uh, like we do on like your specific topic is mostly like in order to, to get a discussion okay great so thank you for your time and hope to see you in coming tutorials follow us by facebook by twitter and subscribe to this youtube channel bye bye have a great day bye